Do you know what is the largest planet in the universe? Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. And Trace 2b is 30% larger than Jupiter. And Kepler 12b is 30% larger than that. And Wasp 17b is 30% larger than the previous that. And DH Towery b is 30% larger again than the previous that. And HD 100546b is 30% larger again than the previous that. And Proplid 133 to 353 is twice as wide as HD 100546b. There you have the largest exoplanet known in the universe up to now. Then you might wonder. Wow, how can this planet be as big as a star? Those incredibly huge planets on long orbits like this are usually detected by direct imaging, that is taking a picture of a star and looking for the planet around it. Large planets on wide orbits are easiest to see, because they're bright and outside the glow of their stars. Many of these planets have one thing in common and that's they're all very young, like a few million years or tens of millions of years old, and they also tend to be far away from their home star, usually orbiting further out than Neptune orbits the Sun. Take Proplid 133-353 for example, it's only half a million years old, sounds old but when you compare that to the age of Earth that's very young. In fact, it is one of the youngest exoplanets known. Its mass is extremely high, probably above 10 times of Jupiter and there are dozens of other examples of planets like this with up to 20 times the mass of Jupiter like HD 100546b. But that raises the question, if there's so many of them, how did they form? How did they get so big? So first, a newborn star usually have a protoplanetary disks with materials for planets to form. And this is why you tend to find larger planets around larger stars because larger stars can have a pretty big protoplanetary disk. Second, how did they get so big? Well they just gathered a lot of materials in the forming stage somehow, or there were a few planets but ultimately collided each other and you get a huge planet. But something is weird. So far humans have detected a lot of objects between 10 to 80 times more massive than Jupiter floating around space. And we call them brown dwarfs. We even classify them by temperature. What L, T, Y type brown dwarf and something like that. You see, they are considered as brown dwarfs. But when they are orbiting a star, they become, planets? Actually, it's very messy when it comes to brown dwarfs. For instance, sometimes we call brown dwarfs around stars planets but some other times we call them brown dwarf companions. But they can't be called companion stars because brown dwarfs are not actually stars. But we also say that brown dwarfs can have planets of their own. But planets are the possessions of stars and brown dwarfs are not stars, why planets around brown dwarfs are not called moons? And if a brown dwarf orbiting a star is considered as a planet, is a body around the brown dwarf considered as a planet too? then you'll have a planet of a planet of a star. But if you call that a moon, we actually don't see brown dwarfs as planets mostly. That's the awkward point of brown dwarfs, because we don't want to treat them like stars, but we also don't want to treat them like planets. Currently, the International Astronomical Union considers an object above 13 times the mass of Jupiter, which is the limiting mass for thermonuclear fusion of deuterium to be a brown dwarf, whereas an object under that mass and orbiting a star is considered a planet. However, the Exoplanet Data Explorer includes objects up to 24 Jupiter masses with the advisory. The 13 Jupiter mass distinction by the IAU Working Group is physically unmotivated for planets with rocky cores, and observationally problematic due to the Sinai ambiguity. While the NASA Exoplanet Archive includes objects with a mass equal to or less than 30 Jupiter masses. So when it comes to... What's the largest planet in the universe? It's a... Uh, 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 uh,